I've had my meltdown moments, right, where I just want to quit, like, uh, like fuck it, I just want to die because, <laughs> you know, like, I hate, I don't, this is the rest of my life, right? I swear I was in love with you, but sometimes we're... I'm in end-stage kidney failure. So end-stage means there's, your the organ's done. You said that you rearranged me. I wonder, did I have to say? My doctor called me and she was like, You need to go to the hospital. And then she's like, You need to go to the hospital immediately. I was thinking, like, Oh, yeah, okay, I'll just go first thing in the morning, right? She's like, No, you need to go to the emergency room right now. So I was like, Okay, it sounds really serious. <laughs> Came to St. Paul's. Um, they had my name set aside. They, I told them what my name was. I showed them ID. They're like, okay, right this way immediately, right? It's like, okay, they got me into this room. You know, nurses come rushing in. They're like changing to this gown. They start me on IVs immediately. And you know, at that point, I was like, okay, I have no freaking idea what's going on. I'm pretty young, right? So it's your first instinct isn't like, oh, I have kidney failure, right? Like, I, do, I barely even knew that was like a thing or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, you know, maybe I just got sick from something while I was traveling. At the end, I was just lots of nausea, lots of headaches. I lost my sense of taste. That was really weird. Like, I couldn't taste food. Really high blood pressure, so that caused a, a lot of headaches. I would wake up in the middle of the night just to go throw up and stuff. And yeah, so here I am. When you do Well like my personality, I'm a pretty independent person, right? It's like I I'm, I'm not the type of person to ask for things. Like, I usually never ask for help. I do everything by myself on my own. It, the learning experience for me is, you know, you kind of learn that it's okay to ask for help. There's always help there if you ask for it, right? So you don't have to burden everything um, all on yourself. And people don't see that, right? They don't, they don't realize just because I seem normal, it's not like a visible, thing, right, that, like, they don't know how I'm feeling on the inside or what goes on um, when I'm not at work, right, so. Here we go. Here's the machine. So this thing right here is my kidney. This thing, all the, there's a ton of little strands running through, and then the um, the blood cells go through each of the strands, and then there's liquid in between those strands that will draw out all the toxins in the that run through that. So this goes out through the machine, and then this one comes back into my body. Uh, this will be an eight hour run. My bed. Just a sleeping bag and a house robe. Yeah, it's been one year. One really long year. I, I notice like like gestures and stuff, like when people do things for me or when they make the effort to come talk to me or message me or whatever, like it means a lot to me. So it, it, you kind of realize like how important it is to, cause who knows, like I, my condition might worsen and I might not, I might, like it, it can go in any direction, right? Like it could get way worse and I might not be here next year. That's, that's always a possibility, right? So you just got to treat everyone really well and hope that, <laughs> you know, like you can do something good in this world, whether or not you are here the next day or... The 
it's a really big damper on my, I guess, my social relationships. Um, just because if they want to do activities or something, I always have to s say no because, you know, I have to come here. I used to do lots of, like, fun trips to, like, to Whistler to maybe for a weekend we drive down to Seattle or go to LA or whatever, right? So I uh, can't really do that anymore, right? Because I have to be here for these times on these days. And plus like traveling is just way too, way too tiring, right? For me, for my blood type and uh, the age group I'm in, the weight is about uh, five to seven years, at least on average. BC has the longest wait times out of any province for a kidney because of lack of registration, right? So about 95% of BC residents agree with organ donation. However, about 20% of them actually are registered. So that's why it's, you know, so important to register. There's about 450-ish people waiting for a transplant right now in BC. It, it is very, in considering the population of BC, it might, it, it might be so simple to come up with 450 living donors or have enough people registered where there are 450 kidneys available, right? You know, that's a lot of lives to save with such a small amount of effort. Um, well, like, I don't really know how I feel, right, until it actually happens, but of course I'd be overjoyed. If someone calls me and saying, you know, like, we have a kidney for you. I'm just gonna be. What's the first thing you're gonna do? After I recover? Yeah, after you get it. Food, food, food. <laughs> I mean, like, I love you, machine, but our time together has been great, but you know, it's just time to move on. <laughs>